Hello, my name is Wendy, the face behind Wendy Workart on Instagram. Um, so the other day we covered how to mix paint. Um, so we mixed these four paints. Um, it's navy blue, unbleached titanium, champagne gold, and copper. And today I'm going to show you how to actually make a paint skin to make jewelry with. So this whole series is on how to uh, make jewelry with these paint skins. So the first thing we need is freezer paper. And um, so I just get this at Walmart. And then underneath, these are just um, like, I guess, art boards. Can't remember what they're called. I get them at Michael's. Um, they're just used for like, you can paint on this side, um, which there's paint all over this one, but this is all I use these for. Um, once upon a time I used them to actually like paint on, but now I just use them as a, a strong, like, um, not bendable surface. So you could use just like strong cardboard or something like that. Um, I sometimes use actual canvases that still have the plastic on them so then the paint doesn't, you know, soak into the canvas if I get some on there. But this is a, this has worked for me for a couple years now. So the freezer paper's from Walmart, the board's from Michaels, but you can use pretty much anything as long as it's strong and doesn't bend because we need to be able to tilt this all over the place. And if you just have this on your table, then you can't like pick it up and move it around. You can a little bit, but you're gonna end up spilling it. It's, it has happened to me, that's why I use this. Okay, so when I mixed these colors the other day, I used just full trawl to mix with them and I gave exact measurements uh, using a scale. And then, so now it's a couple days later, um, I actually tried pouring with them the day after and I noticed that uh, they thickened up a little bit. So, and they're at the same consistencies right now. So what we're gonna do, uh, when, when this happens to you, what you can do at home is either you can add a little bit more flow trawl or we're gonna use distilled water. I used to use just regular tap water but I noticed it was like three summers ago, it was really hot and what happened was my paint kept cracking and I don't know if it was due to the temperature, the humidity, or how I was mixing my paints. There could be a variety of factors that influenced how my, how my paint would crack and craze. Um, so I kept reading and doing research on why is this happening and one of the things I read was that if you use just regular tap water, like the minerals in it can crack your paint. I don't even know if that's true, but after that I started using distilled water. I also implemented a couple other things and I've never really had cracking since or crazing, so not to that level at least. So I always use distilled water. So here's our copper. And what I use to cover the paints when I'm done mixing and before I'm gonna use them to pour, sometimes I pour right away, but if I'm gonna store them, I use a uh, press and seal. So I also get this, I think I got this from actually Sam's Club, but I'm sure you could get it at Walmart as well. Uh, it works fantastic. So it just clings, oh, wrong side. So you can only use one side of it. And then you just seal it around the top and it, no air gets in. Um, now with the stick in there, you're more likely to get air in there, so if you really don't want to get air in there, you take the stick out. But I usually leave it in. Maybe maybe because I'm lazy, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here's the copper, and this is actually pretty close, but I want the paint to flow really easily today. So what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of distilled water, just like a little tiny bit. I'm not even gonna measure it because I never measure anything anyways. So just stir it up really good. And then now it's really, it's perfect. Now it's really the consistency of warm honey. So that one's good. It doesn't take too long to mix that in there. So then the blue, the navy blue is with the artist sloth. You can see all that in that last video. So I, and Artist Off is a little bit thicker. That copper was the uh, Craft Smart from Michaels. All these paints ended up being from Michaels. I didn't even plan that. So I'm apparently at Michaels too often. <laughs> That's where I get a lot of my stuff. So Artist Off is a little thicker. So I put just a little bit more water in. And there we go. That's the perfect consistency. 
Once you start mixing more often, you just get the hang of it. You can just tell how much you should put in. Comes with practice. Okay, so now this was the um, Liquitex Basics uh, Titanium White. So this was a thicker paint as well, so we're gonna just add probably about as much as we did in the Artist Loft. You just want that paint to be nice and fluid. I'm trying to hurry this up because this is not what this video is about. It's about the pouring process, so I'm trying to hurry. And then this is the gold. Just a little bit in there because this paint is already pretty fluid. It becomes very fluid very quickly with the right amount of flow troll. Alright, so now we're going to grab a cup. Make sure there's nothing on the bottom because as you pick the cup up, things can fall off the bottom. See how, I don't know if you can see, there's little specks of stuff. So you just want to avoid that. Make sure it's a clean bottom. And then, okay, so first we're going to pour in blue, the navy blue. So I'm going to take it on my stick and just, I like to go side to side in the cup. I don't know why, that's just how I do it. Sometimes I do different things, but when I do it out of habit, I go kind of side to side like that. Okay, and then we're gonna do the titanium white, which is just an off white. So what I'm doing is layering the colors dark and light, dark and light, if copper and gold can be, you know, dark and light, then, or sometimes I'll do like the, the matte color and then the metallic color and the matte color and the metallic color. Just change it up and see how it looks. It's always gonna look different anyways, so. Very rarely we'll be able to um, duplicate something. So now the gold. I'm putting about equal parts in here. And then the blue. Blue and gold look nice next to each other, kind of creates like a little bit of a green hue, so I like to put those two next to each other. And then titanium white, copper, gold, and then blue. And then I think we're gonna stop there because I wanna keep, it's like a three quarters of an inch left in the cup um, because if it's too full, then it pours out too fast. So now what I'm going to do, I actually like to pick up my board a little bit so this will actually be nice because you'll be able to see it better. And I start at one end of the freezer paper but I do leave about an inch or two because I'm gonna tilt so you'll see. Here we go. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, we're getting to the end. I knew it was only gonna cover about half of this freezer paper, so we'll have to do another little four here. So we're gonna start the blue. in order. We'll do blue, gold, blue, gold. We'll do the white now. So this is changing up the order and copper. I don't think it'll matter that much, but we'll see. And just know that whatever color you put in last in the cup, that color is going to be, there's going to be a lot when you first pour out of the cup because that was just the last one. So there's a lot of gold on the edge there. That's all right, that's probably gonna get, um, probably not gonna be able to see that when we tilt anyways. So we'll see. So 
So now we're doing the matte, metallic, the matte, the metallic. So the navy blue is matte, the gold is metallic, the white, the uh, titanium white is matte, matte color, and then copper is the metallic. So we're changing up the order. Okay, so now copper was my last one. That's all right. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, uh, I've just recently finally learned this lesson, is now I'm gonna start from this side and work my, work my way in. I used to do it like going right from here down, and then it was kind of like ugly here. Whereas I'd rather have it be ugly on the edges because then as you tilt, it goes, like the paint kind of folds over itself, if that makes sense. Um, so you'll see. So here we go. Now if you don't have enough to like fill in this center gap, now that's something you have to pay attention to. As you're pouring it, make sure that you're getting closer and closer to the center. So there is some space in there, but that's all right. Um, it might goof up the center a little bit, so you'd rather like get the paint right up next to the other paint, um, but this is fine. This isn't too bad. Okay, so sometimes I would take my little blowtorch and pop all the, there's a little bubbles in here. However, I tried that the other day um, and I didn't like the result, so I'm gonna just leave it. I'm not gonna pop those bubbles. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tilt this way first. Just slowly, cause I'm trying to fill in those gaps in the middle. There we go. And trying not to go off the edge. So now I'm gonna turn it so you can see. I'm gonna go back this way. So now we're at the edges. See if you, if I had left a little bit more room at the edges, then I could have stretched this a little bit more. So now what we have to do is let this come back in. So this is nice because you can pick up the freezer paper. And now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tilt it this way. I hope you can see me because I can't see myself. Pull this back. I'm gonna let it go so it gets down on this part of the freezer paper and stretches. This is a good learning opportunity. So what I do sometimes when I really hate this ending, this uh, edge part, and the middle is really cool. See how the middle turns out really cool? What I'll do is I'll scoop it. Just kind of hard to do sometimes. You gotta make sure the paint doesn't go off the edge. Um, and then now I'm gonna re-pour because it might be Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let this stretch down. This is one option. You just let it stretch down. Or you could have re-poured. However, then you still wouldn't be able to stretch this out, but the edge might be cool. So if, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now, sorry, you can't see. I'm going to let this come back down. This part's kind of cool. I'm never sure how things are going to dry. They look. It looks kind of cool now, but... We'll see if we're gonna scoop that yet. So now we're gonna let this tilt this way because there's so much open space here. And I kind of like how this looks. So now we're gonna tilt. All the way down. And then tilt that. Actually, what I'm going to do is pick up this edge and I'm going to tilt this way. It gets a little awkward, especially when I'm trying to record this. So there we go. 
Now, um, so I really like this center part and I want it to be spread out more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my hand right under there. Make sure this flips over. And now if I have my hand under there, just be careful because it goes real fast. You're gonna spread out that center part. Okay, so I'm really not liking this edge, so I'm gonna scoop this. Just a couple, and, and I'm gonna let this go down. But now see, now the center went together again, so I gotta stick my hand under there again. Get it to spread out. Do it on the other side. Okay, so there's our paint skin. It's not a skin yet, it's gotta dry. Um, so I usually let these dry for about a week. Uh, just because when you start cutting into them, you don't want, if you're gonna use a, um, hole punch, if you start trying to punch the skin before it's dry, completely dry, like really, really dry, it will get caught in the punch. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll try to show an example of that in the future um, when we do that step. So now I'll have to let this dry for a week. So um, we'll see how it turns out and it'll be a little while before I, I post the next step, but it's very much needed. That's a, a critical step. So let it dry. Don't touch it before. Okay, so when you think it's dry and you can touch it, wait two more days and then you can touch it. Because <laughs> there's been far too many times where I've tried to touch uh, what I thought was dry, a painting that I thought was dry, and it was not. So, and then you cry. So I don't want any of you to cry. Uh, okay, so. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe, I'll be posting a lot more videos. I'm gonna try to start posting uh, one or two a week. Um, probably posting on uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm just new to this, so I'm trying to figure out my schedule. Um, and I'll probably post things in between that don't have to do with this whole process. So there'll be some just videos where I'm uh, pouring and there's like music playing in the background. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you're notified when I post something new. Um, and if you have any questions, any at all, like please comment below. It really helps out um, everybody else. So I'll answer your questions down there or I'll address them in a future video. Either way, I'm gonna um, try to help you guys as much as I can with food painting because it is so much fun. It's like meditation and it's great, especially during this uh, quarantine time. It gives you something peaceful to do. All right, uh, so thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much, bye-bye.